Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a few minutes and talk about how you can figure out the charge on an electrically charged body. Now this turns out to be kind of tricky because you can't actually see electric charges. Remember, electric charges are produced because subatomic protons and electrons are charged. However, Ben Franklin figured out there were two different types of electric charge a hundred years before protons and electrons were discovered. So how did he do it? Well, one of the earliest tools invented to do this is called an electroscope. Let's take a look at what an electroscope is and how it works. First, an electroscope consists of only a few parts. The first is a metal plate, or sometimes it will be a metal globe. Metal is used here because charges can move easily through metals. Then this plate is connected to a metal rod that hangs beneath the plate, and at the other end you have two really thin pieces of metal foil. Oftentimes they'll use gold foil because it can be hammered very, very, very thin. And since these pieces of foil are really delicate, a glass jar is usually there to enclose the foil part, and a conducting rod then is held in place by a rubber stopper. So first, let's pretend that we could actually see electric charges in the atoms which make up the electroscope. We're showing them here in the gold leaves. The red dots represent the positive charges and green dots represent the negative charges. Now let's go on ahead and add some positive charges and negative charges to the rest of the electroscope. Since the overall charge on this electroscope is neutral, there are an equal number of positive and negative charges. Now, if we bring an object that we know is charged in close, something interesting happens. In this case, our charging object is a negatively charged rod. Remember that charges move easily in metal, but not in rubber or glass. Also, remember that like charges repel each other. Since the broad rod we brought in has an overall negative charge, the electrons in the metal plate of the electroscope will be repelled and try to get as far away from each other as possible. The electrons will flow down through the conducting rod and onto the gold leaves. Both leaves will then develop a negative charge. Since they're kind of thin, there's not very, it doesn't take very much force to make them repel apart from each other. And so this repulsive force is enough to make the, the leaves stand apart. So the leaves standing apart is an indicator that uh, there's an object nearby which has a static charge. A similar thing would happen if a positively charged charging rod is brought close to the metal plate. Except this time, the negative electrons in the electroscope are all attracted up toward that charged rod and they move from the leaves up into the plate as they try to get as close to the rod as possible. The plate becomes negatively charged but the gold leaves are now left with a positive charge and again they repel each other. So when an electroscope is near any charged object and develops a charge on top, negative in this example, and the opposite charge, in this case positive in this example, then we say that that thing has become polarized. So a polarized electroscope we can recognize because the leaves will move apart from each other. And when you bring the charged object in, the electroscope becomes polarized, the leaves move apart, you move the, the charged object away, the electroscope becomes unpolarized, and the leaves fall back down again. So, an electroscope can also become charged instead of polarized, just like the charging rod was. One way to make this happen is to touch the electroscope with a charged object. Here we bring in a negatively charged rod and touch the electroscope plate with it. When the rod touches the plate, electrons move from the rod onto the plate. Some of those electrons will also flow all the way down into the gold leaves as they try to get as far away from that negative rod as possible. The leaves are now both negative and they repel each other. If the negative rod is now removed, the whole electroscope now is negative and the leaves stay apart. So if we had touched the rod or the plate with a positively charged charging rod, electrons would have flowed off of the electroscope and onto the rod, and the electroscope would have developed a positive charge. So you can give this thing a charge by touching it with a charged body, and the leaves will stay apart. 
This will be handy, as you'll see in a minute, because a charged electroscope can be used to determine what type of charge is on some other charged body. So, the key idea is here. First, when the electroscope becomes charged, whether positive or negative, uh, the entire electroscope develops the same charge and the leaves will stand apart. When you touch the electroscope, the electroscope will develop the same charge as the charging body. And we call this process of charging this thing by touching it, charging by conduction. Now there is another way to charge an electroscope. This time, the charging rod is brought close to the electroscope, but doesn't actually touch it. The electrons move, and the electroscope becomes polarized. Now, the plate of the electroscope is grounded. This means that uh, the electroscope is touched by a large conductor, like a person. So in this case, I'm going to have a finger come in and touch it. Now, electrons will flow off of the electroscope and onto the ground. Here, the ground is the person. When the ground contact then is removed, an overall positive charge has been left on the electroscope because some of the electrons, electrons left. Again, the gold leaves stand apart and they stay apart. But it's important to note here that the electroscope has developed the opposite charge of that gray charging rod. If the charging rod had been positively charged instead of negative, then when it was grounded, electrons would have moved from the ground onto the electroscope, giving the electroscope a negative charge. So either way, the electroscope develops the opposite charge of whatever the charging body had. And when you do that, when you give something the opposite charge of a charging body without actually touching it with that charging body, we call that charging by induction. So, an important thing to note here is that a charged electron, or rather a charged electroscope, behaves differently when exposed to a positively charged object than it does when exposed to a negatively charged object. It works like this. Suppose you have an electroscope and it's been charged negatively. And we could have done this, as you've seen, either through conduction with a negatively charged charging rod or through induction with a positively charged charging rod. But we know this electroscope is negative and we know it's charged because the leaves are standing apart. Now, we bring in a negative rod close to the electroscope and the electrons in the plate are repelled down into the leaves and the leaves will stand farther apart than they were before. If we then remove the rod, the leaves will drop back to their original position. Then if we bring in a positively charged rod, the electrons will move from the leaves up onto the plate, and the leaves which were negatively charged before now become a little bit more positive, and they're not repelled as strongly, and they tend to fall closer back together. So the fact that the electroscope shows two different reactions provides the first strong evidence that electric charge came in two types, which Mr. Franklin simply designated positive and negative. He could have called them anything. He could have called them charge A and charge B, but he picked positives and negatives. So the key evidence was that the electroscope behaved differently when exposed to oppositely charged objects. This then gives us a way to determine the charge on an unknown object. If we know the charge on an electroscope is negative and the leaves move farther apart when a body is brought close, then we know that body was negative. But if the leaves move closer together, then that body must have had a positive charge. So that's it for our discussion of electroscopes for today. Have fun. Learn lots.